Hello there. I'm Cosette, and the first thing I want to do today is to thank Klaus Kopp for organiz organizing all this, and in the hopes that people will be able to go see Kloster Loche in person, where they will have a chance to discover Darius and David, both miniature and life-size. Eye to Eye with Animal Draft in France, a case study in a broader ecosystem, and by ecosystem I mean a complex community of actors within a particular environment at a given time. I'll move from the very global, as in this Congress, to the very local, a small area in France. The international networking involved in understanding and promoting animal draft means that I will often go back and forth between the local and the international. I'll especially be talking to you about a lot of different things. Local animal breeds, especially horses and cattle, but also mules, and how they are used in work. The people and groups that network together to promote this. Some of the events and places where you can see it happening. And some of the stakes involved today in our world to find a more reasonable relationship with the environment, perhaps moving from one ecosystem to another. Of course, one train can hide another. Horses are much more used in some areas, and that can hide the fact that horses, cattle, and mules often work together, as in the large sugar beet growing areas of France, where oxen did the field work and horses were used for the transport. I will often concentrate on cattle and usually call them oxen, even though ox drivers also use cows and bulls. There is a great variety of cattle breeds in France, and as in many countries, there are rich publications on the various breeds, as well as groups dedicated to safeguarding and promoting them. This is something that is regarded much like French cuisine by the animal draft expert Olivier Courtiade, who notes, you come here to find the delights of our local cuisine. So why shouldn't you be just as delighted to discover the local breed of cattle? and a local breed of work. We know a lot about how many people still keep working oxen, thanks to a remarkable effort carried on by one man, Laurent Avon, to construct a census, and now continued by others such as Philippe Bert Langereau, or Michel Nioulou, whose blog is the hub of networking among ox drivers in France and beyond. This is a part of the communication that is vital to bringing people together. Many countries have fine magazines devoted to horses, even working horses, such as Heavy Horse World in Great Britain or Stachelfelder in Germany. But the magazine Sabot, Hooves, published by François Durand, also has an ox driver's corner. And the magazine's major photojournalist, Jean-Léo Dugas, reports on working animals generally, as well as being an expert on the history and present use of Percheron horses. Know-how equipment and training are really important. This is where a real sense of ecosystem comes in, since you need all kinds of people to create the matrix in which animal draft is possible for care, fine farriers and hoof trimmers, horn growth trainers, trave or ox stall suppliers, and harness makers, large and small who can be multi-skilled individuals or large commercial businesses for harness, shoes, or cues. And you might note that in France, many people seeking ox cues simply buy the piles of old ones from antique dealers. For tillage, logging, or transport equipment, the offering runs from high-profile developers like Promata to individual designers. Of course, the best place in the world to see draft animal equipment is at the Amish-centered Horse Progress Days in North America, so more on that event later. There is a plethora of institutional and private organizations that train people to handle animals, mostly and usually horses, while France Energie Animal tries to bring all the actors together in a network and dispatch out to all the specialist training groups. Last, of course, but not least, there are some especially expert animal and human trainers, like Philippe Kuhlmann in the Alsace, who gives training sessions in the Alsace Open Air Museum. And here you see him on the left in his home, where he has installed a special construction 
to make life yoking oxen easier for himself. Or there is Olivier Courtiade in the Ariège, who follows local tradition in using his wild byre door to hold his oxen while he yokes them. This kind of integration between vernacular architecture, innovation, and expertise is one of the reasons people seek out individual experts to learn with. Major events are also important learning sites, and many of them were cancelled for 2020 and 2021, or people are still waiting to see, such as the Horse Progress Days in the United States, Feldersteig in Germany, the Shire Horse National Show in Great Britain, and regional festivities like yesterday in the Couseron in Ariège in southwest France. But what everybody loves is the shoulder rubbing. Even massive competitive events with the latest in current tillage technology, such as the World Plowing Championship, cultivate a taste for history, inviting old-time tractor drivers, steam engines, and plowing demonstrations by horse or ox teams. There are many associations like the IMA that collaborate with member museums to organize specialist meetings on using animals. Or, of course, there is the FECTU, the network for National Draft Horse Federations that also publishes the journal Draft Animal News. Large museum associations like the North American Alfam have their own specialist groups of professionals who use working animals, and they hold a multi-species plowing match every year during their annual meeting. This is going virtual in 2021 because everyone is adapting to the health crisis, but you can see the kind of spirit that such friendly competitions encourage, and also the links to museums' collections of earlier implements. Some meetings are so big that they only take place at longer intervals, like the festival of the Nantes cow every four years, which always honors the Nantes and some guest breed from another area in France. It takes up important debates about food and the public's relation to agriculture and stock breeding. The festival has also become an important venue for equipment makers of all kinds to display their products and for working animals, horses, mules, donkeys and oxen, to entertain and educate the public through demonstrations. The festival provides an opportunity to see the traditional equipment that cattle need to work in comfort, such as fly chaser face masks or woven yoke pads. During the 2018 festival, the traditional yoke carver, Lionel Rouenet, made an ox yoke from a log in two and a half days, all while answering hundreds of questions. Lionel is as much a researcher as a yoke carver and keeps careful, careful records of traditional yoke making techniques that he learned from older experts like his master, René Alibert. Some groups have yearly meetings exclusively for ox drivers at museums or at individual members' farms, as does the German Working Cattle Group. It also has a remarkable online photo collection of regional yokes and harness, a library of information, and an active forum on working with cattle, as well as encourage, encouraging the group's filmmaker to record ox drivers in their work. The German group has a special affinity for a place just across the Rhine that also has a yearly ox drivers meeting. The Alsace Open Air Museum, the Eco Musée d'Alsace, has everything that animal draft users can hope for. Horses, cattle, even the occasional draft dog, and the wagons, carts, and logging equipment to go with them. The expert ox driver, Philippe Kuhlmann, moderates the ox drivers meeting every year over the long Ascension holiday weekend and gives training sessions in the museum and at his own hill farm twice a year. All of this in the framework of the museum's dynamic and very forward-looking agricultural program. Beside the large collection of Alsatian vernacular buildings in the village, a splendid nature reserve and extensive forest land where the ox drivers can practice logging. And what is most important for working cattle is bringing so many people together, including the chance to transmit expertise to a younger generation, in this case, from grandfather to grandson. 
As an aside, this most certainly helps avoid some of the startling misinformation, entirely unintentional, you sometimes see about working animals, even in very serious museums. To sum up this part, effective use of draft animals involves first networking and communicating so that people meet and share, providing them with opportunities to learn both traditional and the most modern ways of working. This effort can be global, as epitomized by Paul Starkey's work over the years, or it can be very local and involve looking back to let the past inform the present. This is to help you take a deep breath or a 10 second nap before we move on from the global to look at a very local ecosystem. In the Ariège in southwest France, for a visit with a master horseman, mule and ox driver Olivier Courtiade, who brought together his older friends. They remembered everything about working cattle, the cattle trade, and the stories that are part of human relations with their animal workmates. This made them laugh, as when one couple told us how their wagon turned over and slid into the ditch on top of her, so he pulled her out by the legs. Or when another bank began to cry because his uncle, a Maquignon, a cattle dealer, was murdered during World War II for the enormous amount of cash he carried. Everyone knew who did it, but the murderers were never charged. Olivier did all this by inviting us to meet people. There were just as many ladies as men, mind you, to listen to their stories while they showed us their albums of pictures and demonstrated some of the everyday expertise they still use with an ox team. This was a festive occasion, first with an invitation to dinner together to get warmed up to the subject, then discussion of equipment, practical tricks in work like quick knots, and a trip to the local museum where Olivier keeps his own collection of yokes and harness to listen to their comments. After the first introduction, we went on to visit people individually, see their own collections of yokes and harness, carefully dusted off if necessary, and listen to the fine points of yoking. Discuss how much cattle love fermented fodder. Shh, that is totally against EU regulations. Or talk about how to handle a young ox team that is just too unruly. These are all people who have kept the old things that were once part of the ecosystem in their youth and who have not hesitated to move to modern ways of farming. They are as proud of their new machines as of their yoke collections, but what they're most proud of is the beauty and the love of their cattle. We stayed two times for five days and ate, as the Germans say, like God in, Fran in France, bigot in Frankreich. But we also followed Olivier in his work when he yoked his mules to bring logs from his uplands crashing down to the valley, help a stud service two mares, spread manure in his fields, or care for all his leather harness while we listened to some Mozart. This made for a lot of filmings, often a very long series, such as the, the details of harnessing. Or just beginning to break in a young pair of oxen using some very old tricks until they were perfectly able to do regular work by the summer. I'll give those films to Klaus for the virtual archives. We looked at the past too in old books and photos and models or added information in the linguistic atlases about dialect names for carts and wagons or discussed regional yoke types and recalled that ox yokes were always dressed up for special events with their belled spires. The important takeaway message here is that people lived right through the 1960s in an ecosystem with more than enough vehicles, implements, tools, and cattle to make all the most efficient choices for working with oxen seem very natural. Now, Time to take a deep breath again before we glance at the deep past and the overheated present. Working with cattle begins a long time ago, 
and it left its mark on in Neolithic rock walls and in people's minds. Archaeologists dig up intact implements like the travois and roping in Lake Chalin that they ask Philippe Kuhlmann to test out for them with replicas. And today, in many places in the world, people work with their animals slowly or speeding around in great glee. Please notice what is around, wrapped around the knee. Sometimes, even the most official organizations seem to notice there is draft animal power. But look carefully at the cover on the right, as it is certainly an ill-advised fake. And in the small section dedicated there to working animals, the only discussion was of modern-day cattle rustling, to which we could now add the tragic stealing of working donkeys in Africa today to use their skills in traditional medicine. At least the UNCTAD 2020 report does call for everyone to stop and think about other ways to produce food and run economies. So we might look at one author's idea, a donut. That is, keeping the economy within well-defined social and planetary boundaries so we do not slip over the edge. And this will enable us to sum up. Networks are great, but not sufficient. Animal draft needs generational transmission as well as vertical recognition by development planners. Animal draft has to be set into a global approach to the environment so that we stop extracting agriculture and stop breeding from the environment. We could put them back in and stay inside the donut. We may, we might be on the cusp of a new ecosystem. So we can conclude with work and the proposal that one ecosystem can help, can help prepare for another, for others with a diversity of choices and a poetic note on networking for a cause. Thank you.